Daytona Beach, Florida, the world's most famous beach, is strictly for pleasure now. But mementos still stand of a glorious racing past that brought automotive pioneers from all over the world. For the curious, this quiet garage still echoes with the challenges of international competition. Cars still roll along these hard-packed sands, but with a 10-mile-an-hour speed limit, the only thing that races here on occasion is the pulse. It is only fitting that the new Daytona International Speedway should be the scene of the first major assault on the European-dominated Grand Prix racing circuit by Americans. Since sports car racing began, it has been an all-European show, with the Ferraris virtually unbeatable for the last decade. But with growing American interest in sports cars, automobile manufacturers reacted to the new wave of performance-oriented buyers. It took a while to get acquainted. One American answer, dreamed up in 1962 by ex-driver Carroll Shelby, was the Ford Cobra. It took three years of constant change and frequent frustration to pull the pieces together. Originally built as an open cockpit sports car, the Cobra has now become a GT, or closed car, like the new GT40. A more sophisticated machine with a higher horsepower to weight ratio, only 40 inches high, this super snake is capable of speeds in excess of 200 miles an hour. Another American answer is the all-American racer's entry in open cockpit Lotus Ford, driven by Dan Gurney. Equipment gets its toughest test on this two and a half mile, 31 degree bank tri-oval track and twisting, turning, 1.31 mile road course. Over 1,200 miles on this course is equal to 100,000 miles of highway driving. Question, how fast must the car go to win? How do you keep a car from disintegrating before the race ends? How many pit stops will be needed for fuel, tires, and driver relief? Do drivers win races? or do cars. Whatever remains unanswered in practice will be resolved between 10 in the morning and sometime that night on race day. 43 cars, 29 from Europe and 14 from America, will start the 2,000-kilometer Daytona Continental, the longest race on the North American continent. 43 drivers, speaking many different languages, will drive them. The drivers get their instructions. Once around the tri-oval, and then into the road course. All right? Got it. I'm ready. Some last-minute advice and assurance, and turn me loose. A pace car leads the field out of the pits. Twelve hundred and forty-three miles, three hundred twenty-seven laps around Daytona's tri-oval and through its road course. The cars move up tight behind the pace car for the running start. Number 77 Ferrari, the fastest qualifier on the inside. Number 72 Ford GT, the second fastest qualifier on the outside. And the race is on. Ford Ferrari battle begins in flashing style. Bob Bondurant zips into the first turn, opening up number 72 Ford GT. After one lap, it'll become a road race as track stewards set out the cones, marking the entrance to the road course. whips the sleek 40-inch high prototype around the tri-oval, but wait, he plows right through the cone. He grinds down on his brakes as Sergi, the number 77 Ferrari, slips into the road course in first place. Bondurant rejoins the race, well down in the pack. Dan Gurney charges past Miles into third and takes off after Hanskin and Sergi. He pulls even with Hanskin and passes to take second. Gurney moves in on John Surtees, the world road racing champion in the lead Ferrari. Coming out of the road course, it's Surtees, number 77 Ferrari. Gurney, number 44 Lotus Ford. 
Hanscom, number 88 Ferrari, and Miles in number 73 Ford GT, followed by the Cobra. But Gurney wants the lead now. He guns his Lotus Ford, catches Surtees' new prototype Ferrari, and passes him, hitting better than 180 miles an hour. Gurney's car, called the pace setter, looks to be just that. In fact, Gurney is averaging 110 miles an hour per lap, seven miles an hour faster than he was able to average in practice. Surtees, on the other hand, is running three miles an hour slower than his one lap qualification speed of 113 miles an hour in the Ferrari. Interesting question. Who's really hot and who's playing it cool? Whatever the tactics, Jerry Grant, Gurney's co-driver is pleased. Pedro Rodriguez, Surtees co-driver, looks worried. Uh oh fire on the front stretch. Dave Hull pulls number 47 Jaguar off the course. Time to bail out. This car's too hot. Early in the race, and the leaders have lapped far into the field. Gurney is boxed in. But he finds a hole and heads for daylight with 30s right on his tail. Number 47 is the first car to be retired. 10 lap rundown. Gurney, 44, first. Surtees, 77, second. Hanskin in. Watch out! Hanskin spins out. There's only one Ferrari ahead of the four GTs and Cobras. Ten miles to number 73 GT takes third as he passes Hanskin. A pedestrian now, Hanskin dodges traffic on his way back to the pit. Another spin out. Miles slides off the course, but recovers to hold third place. Gurney sprints through the field alone and dives into the road course. But where's the Ferrari? Surtees is the first of the leaders to pit, continental style, as if he had all the time in the world. After all, it's a 12-hour-plus race. But the Cobras pit American style. 12-hour race or two hours. They don't waste a second. The Shelby crews have brought organization to the gentlemanly world of sports car racing. Pedro Rodriguez, the winner of the last two Continentals, takes the wheel from John Surtees. Number 77 Ferrari is still second. The GTs and Cobras are close behind. Gurney Fitz. He's broken all track records up to now. The terrific thrust on the high banks and the hammer-hard pounding on the straights has created handling problems. In second, his crew rebalances the wheels. Rodriguez strains to get the lap back, but Gurney's in a hurry. His car checks out okay. He isn't even going to change drivers with Jerry Grant. He wants to beat the Ferraris personally. The fuel line is swung out of the way, and Gurney goes out the leader. Trouble on the third turn. Rodriguez is slowing to a stop on the course. Gurney keeps charging, full more. The Ferrari's European tires blew, beating the rear end and battery to pieces. Now Gurney can relax. He ran the Ferraris into the ground. He beat them. He let Grant, his co-driver, do battle with the GTs and Cobras. New battery in hand, Rodriguez is going to try to fix the Ferrari half a mile away. But even if he succeeds, He'll be miles behind the leader. In Grand Prix racing, a driver is totally responsible for his machine as long as it's on the course. Co-driver Grant has time to talk things over with Gurney. A 15-pound battery on a half-mile hike gets heavier and heavier with every step. Pace setter now has a five-lap lead, better than 19 miles between it and the nearest competition. 
Rodriguez ran out of car, but not out of courage. Now the Ford-powered cars hold the first five places, unchallenged. It's Shelby's race, as he tells Ken Miles and Lloyd Ruby to go get them. Surtees and Rodriguez gave all they had. Defeat is never easy to take. The race wears on. Drivers push too hard. Judgment becomes blurred by heat and fatigue. Sometimes you don't know whether you're coming or going. With 22 cars still running, the nearest non-Ford, non-American entry is a Porsche running sixth. An unscheduled stop. Jerry Grant brings the pace setter in. Lloyd Ruby gets ready to take out the second place for GT. The pace setter is out of the race with a cracked piston. Ruby rides into first place. Gertie and Grant's ride is over after a record-breaking 825 miles. Now it's GT, Cobra, Cobra, GT, Cobra up front. On into the Florida night. The Shelby crews flash information and instructions to their drivers. The final precautionary pit stop. Pit crews make sure everything is gold for the two-hour push to the checkered flag. Even in the pitch dark, Shelby gets them in and out fast. Down to the last lap. Ruby in number 73 GT has a five-lap lead over number 13 Cobra. The last lap. The Americans have won. They've overthrown the Ferraris in just three short years of competition. What's more, it's a clean sweep for America with Fords taking the first five places. Detroit and Akron placed their products in open competition with Europe's best and won. They proved they had the speed and stamina to run fast and long. 2,000 kilometers in 12 hours, 27 minutes, and 9 seconds. The first round is over. The second, about to begin.